What's up guys, Abhay here and in this tutorial I'm gonna talk about the loops and nested loops in geometry nodes. There's no official loop node in geometry nodes yet but we may be getting it very soon. But I think you can already have uh, nodes that can achieve the same kind of functionality in geometry nodes. So let's get started. And these are all my interpretations so I may be wrong. So in that case I apologize in advance. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first let me show you a simple for loop in C++. Don't be scared, it's a very simple loop. So I'm gonna write a for loop. We have to define a variable first. So int i equals zero. Or let me name this to index a for simplicity. So index is uh, zero, it means that the loop starts from zero and then index a is less than let's say eight times so this loop is going to run for eight times and then it's going to run uh, one step at a time forward sorry guys i'm not very good at explaining in english language it's not my native language it's my second or third language uh, so you know, literally nobody speaks in English, talks in English near me, so I'm talking to myself. Okay, so index, uh, so this loop, for loop, is uh, running for eight times, and we can do anything here, we can write anything here, which will be repeated for eight times. So let's say that I just want to see the output of index A in the console. How can we do that? We can simply write stdc out index a. Don't have to worry about these things. And I'm gonna end the line. And if I just run the program, you will see that this that the value of the index a is zero, then one, then two, then three, four, five, six, seven. So its total number of iteration is eight. Okay. So can we do the same thing in Blender? As you know that each cube has eight vertices. So if you want to know the position of all the vertices, it, a loop has to run eight times. So if I go into the spreadsheet, you will see that this spreadsheet is showing the vertex position uh, of this cube and it's running for eight times it's a loop and it's tied to this cube geometry so you can see this this vertex has a number called eight and the edge has 12 face has six and face corner is 24 and these are all loops running inside this cube so and the main component of this loop is this index if you want to let's say access a particular vertex uh, in 3d space you can use the index number okay the only problem is that this is tied to this geometry so let's say if you want to manipulate the number of iteration how can you do that well if you manipulate the uh, geometry's topology it will change it will so let's say that you want to discreetly control that this vertex this uh, loop uh, for that I can use a simple point so this point has only one count it means if you go into the points there is a index 0 and 1 vertex position and you can control it from here so how many times this loop is going to run you can control it simply like this and you can get the position uh, using this position node sorry this position node so this position node will always give you the uh, the position of the original uh, mesh the geometry and this is renderable if you you know render it in cycles you can see a sphere here but let's say that you don't want it to render so you can simply convert this into a vertices vertex so points points to vertices now it's not renderable Okay, so this is running for 14 times and you can manipulate the this this is a list by the way and you can manipulate the list okay you can add you can subtract even after it has been created you can use a delete geometry node 
okay and you can specify a certain uh, condition like index is let's say greater than computer node so if it's greater than zero delete so you can control the you can also define a range but i'm just showing an example that you can uh, manipulate your list after it has been created so this is the main stuff this index the main component of a loop so you can already do this stuff in geometry nodes but the problem is it's tied to the geometry okay how about nested loops so i'm gonna show you a nested loop for a nested loop i'm gonna write another for loop inside a for loop so let's say int and this time i'm gonna name this to let's say index b and let's say it starts from zero and index b is is going to run for let's say five times and index b plus plus so this loop is going to run inside a loop and just paste it here and i'm going to output the value of index b as well so index b all right so this loop is running for five times and this loop is running for eight times so total number of iteration is going to be eight multiplies five so it should be 40 times so how this loop works how this loop is going to run so first this is going to run the main loop okay and it's going to let's say start from index zero then it will go inside and find another loop so this loop is going to start from zero as well so it will uh, repeat this stuff from zero to one two three four five five times and then it gets out from this loop and uh, this for loop again starts so now the index one uh, index becomes one and then again the same thing happens and then again this uh, index becomes two so this is how uh, this uh, in nested loop works so let me sh show you the output and you will get the idea uh, the clear picture so okay so here uh, see from the beginning so the first time the index is zero okay and this index is zero the second time the second time this loop run so index is still zero the main index is still zero the second index is one main index is zero uh, the second index is two so this is how it runs and when it completes five iteration then the main loops iteration the main loop index changes to one and so on let's, let's repeat this stuff once more so i'm going to write another loop inside this for loops so for index int index c okay let's run it so we are running six uh three loops three loops uh, in a nested loop way so this is index c this is index b and this is index a and you can see how many times it's running okay can we do the same stuff in geometry nodes let's do it so for this uh, i'm gonna do is we have a point so i'm gonna set this to one and we're gonna use the magic node it's called duplicate elements node okay and it will give you a duplicate index so i'm gonna run this loop so this is my main loop this is my first loop okay so let's set this uh, let's uh, run this for how many times we used eight so i'm going to change this number to eight and let's store this a, into our uh, geometry so we can see that here in the spreadsheet so i'm going to create a store named attribute change this to integer i'm going to call this one index a and set it let's connect this here so this is my index a and i'm just going to duplicate that 
and just connect it here again and I'm gonna call this one index B okay and you can keep doing that all right this is our index C and it's going to run for five times and this is going to run for six times so this is our nested loop and it gives you access to this index so this is our main index so I can call I can create a reroute and call it uh, index A F12 index C okay it gives you to access to each element like this index A index B and index C and you can see here the same thing is going on right okay so we have written A for loop in C++ and we can see the same result is blender as well okay let me show you some of the examples uh, and then you can decide for yourself is the nested loop or not okay so I'm gonna show you one of my examples which a uh, tutorial I did uh, a few days ago so this is the triangle accordion tutorial and I have used a duplicate index here to animate the in-between elements between these triangles you can see here is a duplicate index node and let me open the spreadsheet viewer okay so you can see the index number is so this is my main index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 how many times uh, 700 times okay but our duplicate index is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so seven elements and then it is, uh, again starts from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is a loop this is an, uh, an example of nested loop okay so I'm using it here okay and uh, the next example I'm going to show you is from a, a Intagma's tutorial Plexus on plexus effect you can go and watch his tutorial the link is in the description and he used the same kind of uh, stuff uh, like a nested loop but with the uh, simple math operator so let me show you that uh, plexus so this is plexus effect and uh, I just uh, followed the tutorial and did that I did almost everything exactly as he said except I used the uh, duplicate elements over here uh, he used the uh, the math node and manipulated the main index to achieve the same result but here I'm using the duplicate index okay using loop is very important in this tutorial and if you want to understand about the loops he explained it very nicely so I highly suggest you should go and watch this tutorial and uh, then you will understand what I'm doing here and uh, right now we have 200 particles so let me set this to 5 and try to explain what's going on in here so we have 5 points right and in order to make this effect work we have to calculate the distance between uh, the distance between each particle so let's say we have to run a loop that is going to so on the first iteration let's say this is the point uh, where the index is zero so we'll calculate the distance from this point to this point this point to this point and from this point and from that point so that's my iteration one then on the second iteration let's say this points index is is one so so this is zero this is one so the same thing happens again so we calculate the distance from this point to this point from this point to this from this 
uh, to this and from this to this so and so on and so forth so we are doing this uh, process 25 times i guess okay so in this case loops are very necessary so let me set this back to 200 and radius to 0 0.02 so here we have you can see how many times this is this loop is running it's massive and i'm deleting a lot of points here so if we just not delete the points let me just disable this delete geometry you can see how massive this is okay see all 200 points are calculating the distance from every other particle so this is massive and you can achieve this result using the nested loops i just used here the duplicate elements node i hope you get the idea uh, what i'm trying to say thank you so much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you next time bye bye